Oh yeah, uh, just so you know, there was a uh, 100% a bug in my ear. That was a complete mess up. I didn't cheat on you and this is not the reveal that I did. I still don't think like I'm that big. I think of my body as being rather average. <laughs> We're at the moment of the podcast where Damien is making squeak noises. It's his signal, please change the subject. <laughs> Oh, welcome to the Smosh cast. Uh, I am Ian Hecox of the Smosh channel Smosh. Um, I'm joined by my other Smosh channel members, uh, Damien Haas. Hello. And Shane Tom. Oh, you're in for it now. Uh oh. Is this the first time that the three of us boys have been on a pod? That is correct. I think yes, but last time we had Courtney with us, so it's the first time it's just us three boys. Right. It's just the three of us. Yeah, Damon yeah. and I haven't been on the podcast yeah. together. Wait, yeah. we haven't? We no. haven't. No. Oh, we weird. have not. It has been a highly requested um, pairing yeah. Mm, yeah. for the, the boys. Um, <laughs> it's got the itchiest ear. Let's talk about that. Okay. What's wrong with your ear? I don't know, but it's itchy. That's a real okay. problem. Next topic. Mm. <laughs> uh, why is it? Oh, my God. Look at that go. Oh, no. Look we can't go. do this. We got to stop oh, this. Maybe over. you got a spider in there. Have you ever had an, uh, an insect crawl into your ear? Yes, story time. Okay. In elementary school, I heard like the zzz, and then no. it, I, I felt it go in my ear. And when I went to go talk to the teacher, I was like, I think there's a bug in my ear. They were like, there's no bug in your ear. You're fine. And I was like, okay. And and so like I kept trying to get them to believe me that there was definitely a bug in my ear. Eventually, I get sent to the nurse and she literally does like, she goes like, you're fine. There's no bug. And so after like hours of pleading, I get to go to the doctor. And uh, it and uh, my mom, of course, believes me. Thank God. And the doctor's like, oh, yeah, bugs in ears. We get it all the time. And sure enough, um, there was a bug in my ear. It was biting me. It formed a blood clot because of how much it was biting within what? my ear. Yeah. And so they tried to like flush it out and you'd see little bug parts coming out with the water. But then they actually had to like go in and take it out. So I had two major shots of Novocaine in my ear um, so they could like extract it. And uh, the next day I come in with like an all cottoned up bandaged ear and I'm just looking at everyone like, oh yeah, uh, just so you know, there was a hundred percent of bug in my ear. Also, f you. What kind of bug was it? it? Was um, something, it was like mosquito size, so it wasn't too crazy, but I, not fun. I just would love for it to be like, zzz, and all of a sudden you're like, it's, it's, it's calm, there's nothing. And all of a sudden you hear, now listen to me very <laughs> carefully. I am the mosquito deep in your ear and you're going to listen to me. Played by James Earl Jones. We're going to take down the the American government, mm. you and I. I've chosen a fourth grader as my vessel, <laughs> as the most powerful being in America. I mean, they wouldn't know any better. No. We're all titans to them. Yeah, this is true. Oh, we're, all, we're all their gods. Yes. Mm -hmm. Actually, mosquitoes have taken down a surprisingly the most humans out of all animals. Oh, so, actually, you're totally so right. So Malaria, actually, yeah. They're fighting back. It, there is a war going on between us and them. That's true. Yeah. Well, I don't know. No, I guess malaria probably has killed the most people. I think I, I want to – I'm obviously not an expert. I do think mosquitoes technically with malaria mm. – uh, have killed the most humans out of all like, animals and stuff. No, hippos, because they charge. Hippos have killed the most people physically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> out of all the bugs, hippos are the most, <laughs> are the hippos most are dangerous the strongest for sure. insect, they are without for, a doubt. It would, be found, it would be funny if we found out that hippos were, were the, the, the most prolific killers in all of history, <laughs> like that they've killed billions of people, and we just didn't know it. Because they killed all the historians, just oh, above man. Hitler, just able to his historians. Yeah, they just <laughs> went after historians, so they didn't tell anyone. <laughs> they're like, yes, they'll suspect nothing. <laughs> they like just spread lies where they're like mixing it in with hippo facts, where they're like, a hippo can eat up to two bushels of food per day. Also, the Earth is a hundred years old, <laughs> and we're all like, ah, there was no before time, only hippo ever hippo. Yeah, Shelby yeah. Foots in his office, like, and then the Civil War, and all of a sudden just. <laughs> hippo through his office eats him. <laughs> we'll never know what happened because Shelby Foote was mm -hmm. killed. Who the f is Shelby Foote? Uh, Shelby Foote is a prolific historian who wrote a massive compendium on the Civil War. <laughs> oh. there, is, there is one person listening or watching this right now that's like, oh my God. And everyone <laughs> else is just like, uh, yeah, yeah, Shelby Foote. I know where that is. I was going to let it slide, but then you you just had to say it again and again. It's, dude, Shelby Foote, man. You there's a, there's a documentary out that, that follows his whole thing. And also he has like these three books that are all like 2,000 pages each. And it just covers the entirety of 
of the Civil War. Wow, yeah. he must have had no life to just talk <laughs> yeah, about Civil nerd. War. What a freaking nerd. In the middle thousand pages are just him writing war over and over again. <laughs> Nobody's read it, but everyone just claims they <laughs> war, have. War, 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 war. You're not reading this. War, 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 war. North, south, north, south, states, rights. <laughs> Do you think that's how he got out of fighting the war? He's like, oh, no, sorry, sorry. I'm like writing this history book, so. Well, he wrote it in the 20th century. century I so. don't believe you. See, you're just making this all up. I bet his real name was <laughs> Sheldon Hand. Yeah. And he wrote something about the Iran-Contra <laughs> Issue. The mosquito in my ear named <laughs> Shelby Foot is like, okay, no, don't say anything more. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep your mouth shut now. <laughs> They're on to you. <laughs> if you'd ask me where I thought this podcast was going to go, I didn't think it would be about sentient mosquitoes and Shelby the Foot. Yeah. Footerman. Anyways, should we all just like uh, take out some blood and just, you know, leave it out in the open? Yes. Good good <laughs> idea, Shane. <laughs> Keep it going. Keep the ruse going. No, he's type B positive. That's the worst one. Oh, that's he's right. You just found out your blood type. Bad yeah. blood. Yeah, I just found out my blood type. Why you, you find out your blood type? Uh, I asked my mom to send me my uh, actual like birth information uh, because we did the uh, every astrological sign ever. And I learned that like when someone's like, I'm a Capricorn, but a Pisces rising. I was like, what does that mean? And you have to know your birth time. So it turns out I was born at exactly 12 noon. Exactly. Um, and uh, I am blood type B positive. So, See, I thought you went and asked. Uh, you went to the blood Witch? Palace, no. <laughs> and uh, you were like, "Yeah, I'd like to know my blood type." You know, because I'm just having a really hard time. And they're like, "Oh, be positive," and you're like, "Oh." <laughs> I, I, don't, Boo. I don't think I can do this. I, I don't think I can do this. I'm sorry. Boo this man. Oh, Boo. That was a terrible joke, Shane. Actually, get out. <laughs> the worst part is I was busy also ruminating on a joke for the positive mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, you were. Yeah. I saw you. In Jamaica, I'd be, A, hey, B, positive. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the comments make me look at them and just go like, oh, negative. <laughs> God dang it. Uh, universal donor receiver. So I'd say overall that that this whole joke was a positive experience. What do we got, like two minutes left or what? <laughs> uh, so this has been a great podcast. Thank you, guys. This week is a little bit of a rough one because I had to give a final approval of the two truths, one lie that I did with uh, Pamela. Right, right. Um, for those of you who don't know, oh, Pamela the... being my ex-girlfriend. And uh, I thought it'd be such a hilarious idea to do Two Truths, One Lie with her. And uh, th- that video will be out by the time this podcast comes out. So if you haven't uh, watched it, watch it right after you listen to all this. Can we um, speak freely about what happened? Yes, or? yes. Cool. I thought it'd be hilarious. And I was like, okay, one of the great... One of the great lies that I'm going to drop on her at the very end is that I cheated on her. And then obviously that didn't happen. So that was going to be the lie. Mm-hmm. Then something happened. I was obviously like very nervous during yeah. that part. And I was very excited. And I had been waiting a long time to do this two truths, one lie. And it was this was the moment. And she was... She was uh, confusing me with her word jazz. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> And whatever it's called what, English. <laughs> yeah, whatever it was, it was like she was like saying things. I, I I've had to watch it back like six times to understand where it all went wrong. But basically, I for a moment forgot how the game was played, and uh, then she guessed that the lie was that I cheated on her, which is which, correct, which is correct. Yeah. And so she's supposed to spray me if she gets it right. I for some reason sprayed her. Which then proceeded to yeah. uh, 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 what then happened next was probably one of the worst moments in my life, mm-hmm. where I sprayed her. Then I realized, oh, shit, she thinks I cheated on her, and this is the moment that I reveal it to her, spraying her in the face with water in um, public on camera. On camera. In front of people, and you were la- you were kind of like laughing yeah. as you did like, it. Yeah. Gotcha. And like the moment the water like hit her face, I realized, like looking at her reaction, I was like, "Wait, wait, she thinks I cheated? Oh God! Oh no! Oh no!" And like, and you guys, you, Damien and Shane, mm-hmm. like you guys were in the the peanut gallery, mm-hmm. and I told you guys this the that I was gonna drop that. Yeah. And so you guys knew, you guys were ready for it. And you're like, what are you doing? You're playing the game wrong. Yeah. What was what was going 
Well, I have some thoughts on that. You oh. kind of caught it. No, I was going to say, you kind of caught what it might have, what might have so caused his confusion. We rewatched it the other day to give like notes on it. And mm-hmm. first of all, I will say like, you didn't just come up with that idea out of the blue. Like Olivia had one of the best two truths, one lies of all time with her right. boyfriend, Sam, by dropping the bombshell of I'm pregnant, which yeah. was also the lie, but just that moment was great. So yes. I think that inspired. Yes. I was like, so, I was like, oh, I, I'm going to one up it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and no matter so, what, and and no matter what, we did know, like, you did have to know, because it was the same with Olivia, by saying, oh, I cheated on you, we obviously know it's a lie, but there's still that moment of, like, there's the 0.01% mm. chance of, like, is he really willing to do this? Like, whatever. And so you could see that kind of with her. Are she, you that crazy of a man? Because yeah. Pam goes, like, oh, well, I definitely know you wouldn't reveal it like this. So that's that's the thing. Yeah. So when we watched it again, um, we caught where the mix-up happened. So it's two truths, one lie, right? So she's dissecting it after you say everything. It's, yeah. uh, I prefer whatever type of peanut butter I uh, done on my mom's birthday, and I cheated on you. Yeah. Um, so she says, well... I know you didn't cheat on me. That's for sure. And then she continues on. So if she really knew that she, she also playing the game correctly should have said like, that is for sure the lie. But she says, I know you didn't cheat on me. So that, okay, that one. And so she keeps going. And so you're thinking, all right, she's correct about that. True. So then next. And so the idea of true got switched up for both of y'all there. She's like, well, I know you didn't cheat on me. So let me go to the other ones. And then she kept dissecting them. And then that's when you were like, well, wait, so you're trying to find the lie. And she's like, oh, that's right. Well, I know you didn't (laughs) cheat on me. So because that first switch happened for you in your mind, when she revealed like, okay, uh, lie, you, uh, you didn't cheat on me. And it's like, no. The lie is that I cheated on you, not that I didn't cheat on you. So it got reversed for both of you guys. It's it was confusing. just more it's, visceral for her. It's, it's con- also the most simple game in the universe. And this is the second time that I've messed it up because I messed it up the last time I played it, I think. Um, hey. And so, and so, like, I sprayed her in the face and then obviously she, she got very upset, mm-hmm. which I completely understand. And, uh, and then we, we had to, we had to cut the cameras for a moment and, you know, allow, allow everyone to like settle down a little bit. And I'm like, I, that was a complete mess up. I didn't cheat on you. And this is not the reveal that I did on camera. And <laughs> it was, it was the, it was the worst, it was the worst feeling ever. And, and I, uh, you know, people, everyone was very, was very thoughtful uh, afterwards and everyone, you know, wanted to make sure we were okay. And I was, yeah. and they were like, are you all right? And I'm like, well, it turns out, um, I really don't like hurting the people I care about. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I felt bad for you too. I felt bad for both of you, but I ran into you in the bathroom. I ran into you in the bathroom afterwards. I was like, hey man, are you doing okay? And you're like, well, I'm worried about Pam. And I was like, yes. And I know that as well. We, you know, we all are, but like, you know, obviously you didn't mean to do that. I'm worried about you too. Mm-hmm. And then Pam comes out of one of the restroom stalls and just says, am I in the wrong bathroom? <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. Just like, what? hi Pam. <laughs> <laughs> what the f- it was the weirdest moment. I, I definitely felt bad for her. We cut a lot because, yeah. yeah, I mean, she knew pretty quickly. Like, we cleared it up very quickly, but still that just reaction yeah. of, like, oh, my God. Because, yeah, what we cut was her being sprayed with a super soaker and then be like, you cheated on me? And, like, yeah. and we were all just like, oh, no. And you yeah. were just like, I, I could tell in that moment I felt bad because you looked at her like, what? What? Obviously, no. Like, yeah. hold on. What? What's going on? Yeah. And then it it slowly hit. And I mean, everyone in that room. The problem is, everyone in the room. I think, except you and Pam, knew it was going wrong because mm-hmm. we were looking at each other, Damien and Courtney and yeah. I. And the I was looking at the cameramen and everyone in the room, and everyone was like, eyes wide open, mouth agape, mm-hmm. being like, "What yeah. are you doing?" And then after it all went down, my favorite quote from the yep. day was Brennan our cameraman just looking at you and just went Ian that was the dumbest thing I've ever seen <laughs> um, but I felt really I felt funny. horrible because then yeah. later I saw you in our cast room and you were just kind of standing there and I was like hey how are you doing like oh, it must have been you know I'm, I'm sorry and you were just like yeah I just I've never hurt her that way yeah. and oh. I was like I was like oh. Ian yeah. like you, you, and to, to hurt someone on that level when you didn't do anything wrong, yeah. like you accidentally pulled a horrible prank is what happened. Yeah. And you would never obviously do that to her. Pam Hell is no. the sweetest human. So it's hard to see that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it, it, I, I, I felt for both of you and I, I think we all do. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's really funny. It's when we when we broke up, uh, I was having like little sort of like anxiety attacks and, mm-hmm. and I, I kind of told her about it and she. 
she was like, okay, well, I have like this kind of like medication um, that, you know, if you're having an anxiety attack, you could take it and it kind of kills it immediately. And she kind of like gave me like a small, like a small amount, like not like a f- yeah. full dose. Um, she's like, if you ever feel it, you know, take one of these. So I, I kept it in my backpack. I actually never ended up using it. I got better. I still had it in my backpack. And so like after after the shoot, like I walked into the room and she was there and I was like, are you feeling okay? And she's like, no. I was like, are you, uh, I have that medication you gave me. Do you want it? She's like, yeah. That's yeah. So like it strangely like came full circle. Yeah, full circle. She seemed fine pretty quickly. Like she, she really pulled it together very well. But it just it just shakes you a little oh bit. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah, yeah but, well it's the context. It's getting told you, you were cheated on is one thing if it's told in a specific <laughs> way, but getting sprayed in the face with a <laughs> super <laughs> soaker in yeah. front of a bunch of people yeah. is but, but having having said that, I respect the hell out of you for putting out the video and acknowledging it and like talking <laughs> yeah. about it now. Because I I feel like I would have been like, no, please, like, uh, there's no way we can cut it to make this fine, like, please. But you were like, no, we we it happened so. pretty, pretty immediately. Because I, I talked to you and Pam after, I was like, you guys, you know, you know, you don't have to put it out there. You can cut whatever. And both of you were like, nah, we did yeah, it. It happened. Let's do yeah. it. So I was like, dang. I'm I'm not a I'm not a perfect person. So wow, we just okay. Um, Ian just I'm not a, singing a song, and we um, had to cut it. So I'm really sorry. Um, he sang the entire song. That song by Hoobastank. He sang an entire no, Hoobastank song. My question is, who Bastank? Jesus. Uh, is this I whole podcast? I, I'm sorry. I, I can't make it to band practice. My Hoobastank. <laughs> Doesn't make even that doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> See, I replaced the T with an H. Mm. Uh, instead of a tuba, it's a huba, and it's stink. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I just figured the the huba was just some sort of like maybe, you know, Doctor Seuss instrument. It's what they call the uh, baritone tuba. Mm. There's a huba under my booba. And there's a squid under the did. Uh, so anyways. if you guys want to see the worst moment of my life, um, yeah, feel free to watch that video. It's it's so painful for me to watch, like, and I had to watch it many times. And um, man, I am such an idiot. But I think it's also important to show that you know we all we all make mistakes. Absolutely, I'm not a perfect oh, person. Totally. <laughs> I keep thinking the hoobies, I keep thinking the hoobies dang song. It, it is really. Uh, if there's ever a video I recommend to watch, man, it's that one. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's incredible. Because it is also still funny. Oh, but yeah. There's just such yeah. a roller coaster of human emotion where we're just – like if you could see like a waveform of people's emotions, it would just be like spiking in all yeah. different directions. Well, yeah, and then Pam had to turn after you and hers was like, sometimes I fart to distract you. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. like, hey, me, my favorite color purple is like, oh, okay. No, it was about Dr. Amal. Don't you listen? Oh, right, yeah. <sighs> Uh, the real question, though, Ian, is what is your mom's birthday? I, I honestly You don't. still, you I didn't don't. after that video. I don't Do you know, know the month? You have to know the month. It's like March or something. September I 19th. I, I mean, I guess I could check the internet. The internet probably knows. Until Ian finds out when his mom's birthday is, we have to assume every day is Ian's mom's birthday. So would, happy would, birthday, ch- Ian's mom. <laughs> Let her know. Happy birthday in the comments. I would check Facebook, but I didn't add her on Facebook. Um, guys, we're adding more to the petition. Uh, Ian needs to go to therapy, uh, and he needs to find out his mom's birthday and get her uh, a gift. And clearly, probably, you know, a bunch of gifts because you yeah, probably some have some retroactive got... gifts or That's one yeah. big one like a like a big old like a hen that'll lay her eggs constantly because it'll give gifts year round and that way you don't have to know when her birthday is because there, it will probably lay an egg on her birthday that's true so that's the key fat is that how it works yeah. that's that's what I do okay so just get her a fat hen mm-hmm. okay you're right I do need to go to therapy still everybody needs to go to therapy yeah. Dam- Damien. Damien you should go to therapy I straight up should Damien you uh, <laughs> you and I uh Talking about making a therapy pact. Yeah, it's weird because I'm very vocal about how I think therapy is great. There is no shame in it. I think everybody could benefit from it. But I myself have also not had a therapist in the past that I felt really comfortable with. I've had like two or three before and I've just never felt great about them. Um, Maybe you need to go to therapy about going to therapy. Hey, I I need a vacation from this vacation. But yeah, I I probably should. Um, I just have a hard time finding someone. It is definitely an investment emotionally trying to find someone, open up that first time, be like, do I like this person? Like, you know, I've had 
people before that I think would work for others. But, you know, for me, they'd be like, you know, hey, well, you know, everything you talked about makes sense. Here's a bunch of worksheets for you to fill out. And I'm like, mm-hmm. what? Homework? Like, what? And it's like, I feel blank when I blank. And I'm like, I don't, this isn't for me. And so I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's so many different types of therapy. and uh, That's true. Yeah. It's about finding the right right one. It's It sucks. Uh, it takes time. But yeah, it's worth it. I'm not against it at all. I just, I don't know why I haven't sought it out for myself yet. I think also, also for me, it's a lot easier to like ignore my problems sometimes and pretend they don't exist. And if I'm going to therapy for them, it's like, all right, let's acknowledge that these problems are very real and deal with them one by one. So like, you know. But. Yeah. I mean, isn't that what therapy is all about? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm. It's not, it's not higher on our priority lists. Generally. I just, mm. I just forget, instead of ignoring my problems, I just forget about them. Uh, <laughs> our, our director was, was, uh, was, was referring to some sort of like bad thing that happened dur- like during the downtime of Smosh. She's like, yeah, you remember when like, can you like, I'm just still like freaking out about this thing that happened like six months ago. And I was like, what? And he's like, you don't remember this thing that happened? I was like, no. And he's like, if only I could have your brain for, for just a day. <laughs> it's, yeah. I mean, hey, it's, there's benefits and drawbacks to that. But definite benefits of being able to forget. Benefits, mm. don't have to deal with the problems. Your problems, not remembering your mom's birthday. Yeah. His mom's birthday is a problem. A, that have is to actually a, a massive it. problem. So, yeah. Yeah. You forgot about it. I, uh, Courtney showed me this, this like. Oh, you uh, know Courtney? Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't usually make it known that I know Courtney. <laughs> Sick. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. I know Courtney. <laughs> we're, we're okay. Cool. Um, no, I love Courtney. Cardboard. Very cool. She showed me this, uh, this, uh, website that had like it, you could like put your ad like address in and it gives you like a map of like where like all these therapists work. Mm. And I was like, this feels like a dating website. Like they have all these, like, like all the therapists have like headshots and they're all like psychology today. uh, Yeah. I think think so. so, Yeah. That's how I found people before. Yeah. And it was like. And it was like most of them were like women and they were like attractive like headshots. And I was like, I'm not trying to have sex with my therapist. I just want a <laughs> But that's therapist. something to unpack in therapy. Why when you see an attractive woman, do you immediately think, ah, I would be having sex with her? Well, can't you just boy, deal Ian, with her? you got a lot of work well, to do. <laughs> uh, I, have, I have a friend, s- straight guy, uh, and he says he only uh, goes to gay male therapists. Interesting. Because yeah. he, doesn't, he doesn't want that. That sort of like thing, even in the equation, or maybe, or I maybe that's actually a cool idea. Or maybe that just works. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, and I have somebody that only totally goes to women therapists, so cool. maybe it's maybe it's you just got to find because well, you, you would also find get that person. You would get that perspective of somebody who would date men, but also knows what it is like to be a man. That'd be interesting. They they sort of can see both sides. If if you are a straight male, they would see both sides of what you need to hear. Maybe I don't know. I can see that working for sure. Do you guys struggle with any sort of like insecurities? Or? Well, oh, for sure. A reason I also, I think therapy is great is because, uh, you know, I don't have, I'm not an expert in psychology, but from the classes I've taken, like the big takeaway is that we know far less about ourselves than we think we do. Mm. So you might think you know what your insecurities exactly are, and you probably know a lot of them, or you think you know what your your issues are, but there's probably a lot that you're just simply unaware of, mm. that through a therapist asking you the right questions and just conversing with them will be brought to the forefront, and then you'll be like, oh my gosh, I wasn't aware of some of these things, that then it helps so much. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody has a lot of insecurities too. I mean, I, I have not been feeling good about my physical appearance lately, probably for the past like year, year and a half. Like if you watch older Smosh videos, I was like much thinner then. And, um, also had a lot of stomach problems, which is, you know, partially why that is. But, you know, my parents were always very physical. They met because my dad owned a gym and my mom taught aerobics there. And so like, that was always a way to like, I bet they have great photos from like the eighties. None. Literally none. What? I asked my mom for 80s photos for a potential video that we, and they're literally none. Bullshit. Um, Bullshit. But like, I, you know, that was a good way to get like attaboys from the parents and like, ah, you've been exercising. Like, that's great. And now that's not a part of my life so much because I'm just so busy doing either voiceover, Twitch streaming, or being here that I just do not have time to exercise right now. And I've let myself go by the wayside a bit, but I'm trying to figure out how to still feel good about myself 
even if it's not in a physical way. And I've never been comfortable in my body. I was a chubby kid. But, but yeah, I would I would say you're you're insanely hard on yourself mm-hmm. in that regard because I don't think anyone would definitely people watching I don't think would ever claim you to be out of shape, but no, I notice all the time you talking like like oh yeah, I don't know about this shirt it makes me like uh, like this mm-hmm. or whatever or like we'll take a group photo and you're like I don't know it I don't know. I don't like how I look in that or whatever. Yeah. Or like you pointed out in videos and edits, you're like, ah, I look like this. And I'm like, I would, I would have never noticed it. Well, you're, you. you're holding such a lens to yourself. And you're being so hard on yourself. Yeah. Oftentimes we're our own biggest critics. Thank God. Cause if anyone else was worse on me, I'd be like yeah. that, that dude's just an asshole. Well, we wouldn't keep them around. <laughs> yeah. Like, honestly, yeah. like we're like, I, I think, you know, one of the, one of the greatest things about the people that we've sort of kept around ourselves and surrounded ourselves with here is like everyone is super supportive of each other and you know Mm -hmm. we all we all want the best for each other i would hope that you know if any of us are struggling with anything that you know we would all be here for each other absolutely no i love these there's no real reason for it i love the people around me um nobody's been like mean about anything on the internet which is shocking but like it just comes from within and i know it's something i've got to work on mentally as well as physically yeah Um, i feel like i feel like i'm i'm mean to you when when you're talking about yourself and i'm like you shut up right now (laughs) <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, you I do like, do that. I, I like it. Though. I feel like I'm, I'm like, oh, maybe I'm being too mean, but yeah. I'm like, I'm like, shut the hell up, Damien. Well, and I don't think those insecurities would leave you if, you know, if you got into the best shape of your life, you would mm-hmm. still. That's those insecurities are still there, and you're still gonna be like, oh, I don't, I don't know yeah. about this today, or I don't know, ah, whatever. Like, if you're insecure about your body, you're gonna be insecure about your body, and you can't. The only way to beat that is to mentally you know, counteract that or to find ways around it. I mean, you're somebody, you exercise all the flipping time. Mm-hmm. And when I see you, I think you're like the most shredded person I've ever met. <laughs> but if you're talking about those insecurities not leaving you, do you feel like you still deal with that stuff? Uh, absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I'd say part of the reason I work out so incessantly is because like if I go two days without working out, mm. I'll be like, oh God, I feel, I feel like goo wow. today. I, yeah, I hate it. And it's, it changes, right? Like, cause it'll be, you know, y- y- for the longest time it was that I was like, oh, I'm too skinny. I'm like, whatever I, uh, you knew up until like, I want to say the age of 23 or 24, I wore jackets year round. Mm-hmm. Like even when it was like, I can think of that black jean jacket. It's what I met you when you were wearing it. Yeah. Uh, that, that, or that was, it was like that Robert Pattinson type black, black one. And then I switched to the green leather one, Mm -hmm. which I would still wear when I started here. And I would wear them if it was 90 degrees outside, I'd still be wearing that jacket. And it was just, just because I was just like, Oh my, I don't like how my arms look today. Wow. I didn't know that. Like whatever. Yeah. So, so yeah, no. And then like pool parties and stuff, I'd be like, Oh, like no I, way, because I, yeah. I feel like that, and if you feel like that, there's no hope it's, for me. It's just, it's just, I don't know, and it's, and then it changes, man. Like, because I, I definitely, you know, I can't self-diagnose, but mm. uh, you know, with like body dysmorphia and stuff, I still don't think like I'm that big. Like, I don't think I'm that buff or anything. Like, I don't, I don't, I, I would, I think Damn. of my body as being rather average size, but what'll happen is sometimes even if I do get bigger, then I'll just be like, oh, but it's shaped, my body's shaped weird or it wow. just looks weird or it just doesn't look good. I don't look, I just don't look like I'm in great shape. I just, whatever. Uh, so wow. it changes all the damn time and it's really tough to keep up with. And, uh, I, I really am a, you know, it's, I'm a prisoner to it sometimes because there'll be days where like, if I haven't worked out for a couple of days and then say it's, you know, uh, oh, I haven't worked out for the past two days, but today everyone's going to Disneyland. But if I go, I'm not going to be able to make it to the gym. And I'll be like, oh, should I go? Interesting. Should I, should I go or should I go to the gym? See, I had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea that, you know, you struggled with this because, because I, you know, I mean, we make, we make jokes all the time and I, I don't know if it's, if it's, if it's hurtful now that I'm thinking about it, we make jokes all, all the time about how swole you are. Yeah. Like it's, it just, it's, <laughs> I, I think I have gotten much better at about everything through Smosh just because not necessarily through praise doesn't really help any, any, sure, any of it. It's... In fact, sometimes I think it makes it worse. Um, a lot of the most insecure people I know physically are the models and the like best looking people I've met because growing up, they were constantly told you're so pretty. You're so attractive. So it's like, Oh, "Oh, that's my entire worth. So if I lose that, even for a moment, I'm nothing. 
Got it. Uh, and probably the same why people who are praised for being super smart then get super insecure if their intelligence gets you know questioned. But that's the thing about you too that's interesting to me is like you're you're an incredibly well-rounded person. So like yeah, you exercise constantly, you're doing fine in that department, but also you have a lot of intelligence to back it up. Your house, which we saw in the house tour, is stacked with books that you've read, not even counting the books that you gave away because you know you're just not going to read them again. Um, you're always trying to like, you know, discover more things about like music. You were teaching yourself guitar, right now you're learning Spanish. Like there's so much that like even if your physical stuff went away, even if all your books burned and you couldn't read anymore, like you would have so much to fall back on. So it's interesting to hear, and I know nothing I say can fix anything, but it's just interesting knowing that like, you know, a lot of people have one thing to build self-worth off of. You've got a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, it's tough. I mean, I but we could all s say that for ourselves, right? Like. I, I don't know. I, I feel like a lot could be the, the exact same could be said to you, could be said mm -hmm. to all of us that, that work here uh, and for so many people who are insecure. Um, and I think uh, it, there's an aspect of insecurity fueling that motivation, but mm -hmm. I don't think it's a good fuel. I think a better fuel is just enjoying life and doing things because it's fun and wanting improving yeah. yourself because improving yourself is fun Yeah. for the sake of it, not for, oh, I need to improve myself to become something that's worthwhile. Sure. Did did those insecurities become worse after your last breakup or I actually think they were they've gotten better I think and it changes you know as you get older just different just in life insecurities just switch around I think when I'm insecure I am insecure about anything it, it, I will find the thing to be insecure about you know uh, I'll be like oh I'm short or oh I'm this or oh I'm I'm not whatever like if it's and it'll be physical or then it'll be just who i am or something like that i mean sure. and i think that goes for everybody i think i think insecurity is insecurity um mm. it takes many forms i think there is a good humble way to look at that and be like you know everybody can say that we all have these different talents and different things to fall back on but i found that you are somebody and just speaking as a friend here i found that you are somebody that will do that all the time to the point where it's not even a sense of necessarily being humble, but you're taking victories away from yourself. Everybody has different things that they can consider, you know, a source of pride for themselves, or I should, I should hope so. And if you don't feel that way, you should definitely do some soul searching and find it because it is out there. But with how many different areas of expertise you have, Shane, I think it's okay to like every once in a while say it just for yourself. And it's not even an arrogant thing. It's like, you know what? Not everybody is able to do all these different things. Sure. Good for me, because it's not like I was born being the best runner, smartest boy in comedy. Like you work flipping hard in a lot of areas. So I would just encourage you to, you know, acknowledge that for yourself. You know, everybody has the insecurities. Everybody can fall back on stuff. But you work hard to have a lot of things you're good at. Good for Shane. Well, thanks, man. You got it. Thank you. Yeah. I, I And I, I don't know. It's, it's like I said, the, the, even self praise, it's not. I don't know. It, it, I feel that it's not like that's like. Oh, great! I am this thing. I am who I need to be to be happy, right? I, yeah. I just think that the pursuit of all those things for the sake of finding happiness will never achieve it. I think when I find when I'm able to let go of those insecurities is when I. I think honestly, what it is 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 in its own form selfishness, right? I'm doing all these things to improve myself, whatever I'm thinking. And, but it's just that I'm thinking about myself. Hmm. I'm, I'm so focused in on improving myself and, and becoming something that I need to be that I'm not looking outward. And so when I, I let go of that and I go, you know what? I'm going to focus on my friends, my family, the people around me and what makes them amazing. Mm -hmm. Suddenly then you just lose yourself. And it's, it's this, it is kind of this euphoria, this breaking free of that prison that you yeah. get into yourself when you're just locked into your own head about what's wrong with you and what everybody's thinking about you instead going, no, I'm going to focus on what's great about everyone around me, what I love about them. And then you feel that connection to everyone you go, and then you suddenly feel loved. Because you're yeah. looking for that when you're trapped inside yourself, but you can't feel that love because you're just inside yourself. Hmm. You're sealed away. You get out. You go, okay, I'm with everyone. Oh, my God, I'm loved, and I love them, and great, and now I feel great. That's the trouble I think I have in dating, actually, is I'm so focused on, like, how am I coming across? Am yeah, I being absolutely. a good boyfriend or whatever? My like, God. Am I doing anything weird that's making her unhappy or anything like that? As opposed to, like, just be with the person. This is – sorry. Yeah. No, no that's, that's it. Because uh, that is 
also totally my issue uh, in that I will be on dates. Uh, I'll go on a couple dates with someone <laughs> yep. and I will be like, I'm doing, I am doing everything by the book right. Mm. Right. Like, and I've talked about it on, uh, Courtney and I have our show on, on Smosh Pit where we talk about dating and stuff. And mm -hmm. I brought it up how there's date chain and in it, it's me attempting to do, to be the CW version mm -hmm. of myself that I'm trying to achieve. Like I'm, I work out every day and I read books and I studying and I, I try to do good at my job. And, but, and I'm, so I'm trying to be this person that at a certain point I'm realizing I haven't even formed a connection with this person Yeah, yeah. because I'm not even present. And even if you're listening and asking questions, you're like, good, that was a good question to ask. Like, yeah, yeah. and it's, it's, it doesn't yeah. even matter. And people aren't looking for that. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for a CW girl. Like I'm, I'm looking for a genuine, <laughs> yeah. fun person to hang out I'm with. I'm looking for a and CW yet, I'm girl. I'm not, I'm not I'm, being that. Yeah. I'm not being what I like in other people. Mm -hmm. If you're not being 100% yourself in the date, then you're presenting a false version of and yourself. eventually that has to go away yeah that's, or that it has comes a time back limit. to bite you it comes back to bite you for sure oh yeah, yeah absolutely so i mean like it's it's not about i'm not saying like go in there like you don't give a shit, but, no. but, like, but actually kind of yeah like still be nice well, but like I, sure i, I think no. what it is 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 go in there and and don't because what it is is it's lying it's mm. lying on on how you react to things how you think about things and 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 all that lying, even if it's your body language, even if you're trying to attempt to change your body language, you're, you're lying in an aspect. Mm. Care, genuinely care about that other person. That's that's you giving a. Shit. But but to to act in a way that you wouldn't normally act is is lying. Yeah, we were trying to hook Damien up with this girl that. <laughs> oh, he hates this. I don't. <laughs> I don't. Can I mention it? it? Yeah, of course. Okay, so. We were at rent. Can I say where? I guess yeah, I don't, I, I, let's be more vague. Okay. We were at a... Um, medieval fun medieval time. Fun <laughs> <laughs> oh, now he hates this. Uh, I do, but let's do it. <laughs> this is how we get through it, Damien. Great. That's no, great. You're helping. So, Welcome to therapy. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I think I'll hit up a therapist after this. <laughs> we're gonna hit. We're gonna hit this thing head on. We were running into a whole lot of people at Ren, Ren oh, Fair. We were. Um, all these people that we knew, and uh, we ran into one of the people that works here. She has some friends that were with her from a previous job, mm -hmm. and Damien struck up a conversation with one of them. You guys were talking about anime. <laughs> was it? Nah. Um, she, I think she'd brought up something about like, oh, I really like stout beer, but no one knows how to pour it right. And I was like, oh yeah, like no one pours the, and you don't get the head properly. And she was like, ah, this guy gets it. And that was more or less it, but. Yeah. It's a good meet cute. Very that quick is, That is actually a very cute conversation. Uh, <laughs> and she had mentioned to our friend, our mm. coworker, that she thought he was cute. Oh, snap. Which is oh snap! Which is true. Oh my God! <laughs> Poor a Guinness for this so, boy. And so when I heard this, when I heard this, you know, matchmaker Ian said in, and I'm like, <laughs> we gotta make this happen. And I was immediately met with a wall. Oh yeah, yeah, that's me. <laughs> that um, wall being Damien. Well, here's the thing, man. I, I haven't. So my last major relationship was about two years ago, and in that time, I've dated a little bit, but that last relationship really sort of shook up the image I had of what I wanted in my future. Um, I'd always wanted that, like, you know, meet each other while you're young and, like, sort of playhouse for a little bit, and then you're going to get married and you're going to have the kids and all that stuff. And after that ended, I sort of was left looking at, you know, the time I'd spent and what I'd learned from it and what I wanted going forward, and... To this day, I'm still not really sure what I want. So I've been in this weird space of like dating sounds stressful. It sounds time consuming. Like during that time, I didn't focus on my career at all. I really like wanted to focus on that now. And it's not that I don't want to date. It's not that I don't want companionship. It just sounds, I don't know. The idea of it automatically gets me a little like flustered and stressed. Sure, so, sure. um, you know, hearing that that girl thought I was cute was really nice. And I thought she was cute too, to be frank, but it was just this mindset of like, oh, what? And now I've got to go on like dates and like, oh, what if she texts and I'm busy? Like immediately it just became very like, 
it became more out of obligation yeah. as opposed to the place where it should come from, which is like, oh, that sounds like fun. We could go grab a drink and hang out and do blah, 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 you know. Uh, so I don't I, know what that wall think, comes from. I think also you mentioned you mentioned you don't know what you want from a relationship. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't – I mean, I think going in with an expectation of, of what you want could also be setting you up for, for disaster as well. That's true. Like, I don't yeah. – I mean, I don't – I don't know what the next person I'm going to meet is is going to do to my life. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't have any any um, you know expectations to have kids, but who knows? Maybe I'll meet that person and they'll be and I'll be like, yes, I would like to impregnate you and <laughs> have a child. <laughs> I can probably, yeah, say, I can probably, say, that. Talks I can probably say that in a less creepy way, but I won't. Uh, <laughs> Yes, madam. Would you enjoy breeding with yours truly? <laughs> Let's mate. Are you fertile Let's at this moment? Let's mix our genes, and I'm not talking about laundry. But I, <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, God! So I think, like, yeah. you just you don't have to like. I think going in with any sort of expectations mm. is a bad idea. You don't know this person at all. I know. But also, you're never going to know them if you don't just. Just shoot your shot. I also think you're you're not respecting your own boundaries and everything because you're talking about your fears. Mm-hmm. And it's I, I, I get it because I, I know how you think. And I, I think with regards to dating, I'm very similar in that you're you're like, oh, God, what she text and I'm busy? Oh, what if I let her down in this way? What if I'm not, mm-hmm. you know, what if I, uh, I have to flake on a date? And, oh, God, there's so much pressure and I'm going to mess it up. You get to live your life. You're busy. You're doing your thing. And you can keep doing your thing. And no one especially if you're just dating someone, Mm -hmm. they don't get to dictate anything. And if they don't understand that and they don't respect that, they're not mature enough. Yeah, this this is the thing. This is the big, big difference. We're all adults now. Yeah. And if this person is also an an adult, then they'll understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think if... If you know, you know, you went out and you guys were like, oh, stouts and beer. And then the conversation ended there. And you're like, oh, I don't relate to this person any other way. And, yeah. and I didn't and have I'm a good like, time. Also, I don't drink that often. It's more of a rare treat kind of thing. And yeah. it should be like, oh, I drink seven times a day <laughs> on the hour. And it was like, ah. Oh. I'm drunk right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was drunk when we met. I'll be drunk when I die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and then know. at that point you say, well, I think you should probably seek help. And, mm. um... Hit me up when you've figured that out. But I get what you're saying. I'm just, I'm not good with pressure. And there's a lot of pressure that comes from within myself. It's no one else doing anything. I just build up a million different anxiety bombs in my head. Hence, should go to therapy. Mm. Um, but I get what you're saying. Yeah, it's, yeah. I'm, I'm open to the idea of dating. I just, yeah. I, I wish I had a more eloquent way to say it, but you just don't know until you try. Yeah. I, and I think it's one of those things too, those anxieties simply... I think you're waiting for them to go away. I think you're wait, you're hoping that in time you're going to be like, oh, suddenly I no longer feel anxious about dating. I, it might be one of those things you just kind of got to, you know, condition yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Like you, you just got to do it. The only thing I can think of to compare it is I went rock climbing with Monica uh, the other day and uh, – you know, I was trying to do it and I think I'm strong enough to do it, but man, it's just, it's just impossible because my fingers just aren't built for it. And I'm like, ah, it's nerve wracking. I don't know if I want to do this, but I'm like, the only way I can ever do this is if I just keep doing it and keep failing. And I think in a way dating is like that, man. Like for sure. I'll meet a girl at the top of a rock climbing wall. Yep. That's right. I mean, that'd be a good meet cute. That would be. And I'd be like, excuse me, you dropped this. And she'd be like, I dropped it all the way down to the ground. How did you get my cell phone. I'm like, I caught it midway down in my teeth. Yeah. Like a you caught whale. It during a dino. That's like, a rock climbing word. Everybody n- knows that. Everybody knows. You, oh, d- dino Dynamic that. movement. Oh, oh, see, I did. Dino, you didn't just go there. Cut it. Cut that line. Please. Please. I think, I think also the thing is like, I don't know. So, so much of my, so much of my life is like, I, I'm just, I just don't want to regret not taking a chance at things Mm -hmm. and i just i think that's that's the that's the worst thing ever is is regretting not doing something or trying something and then kicking yourself in the ass later on for for not doing it Mm -hmm. i have uh in in the past two years that i've been single uh i i've definitely failed pretty hard a couple times and uh honestly they're just funny stories now yeah like i'm kind of i'm kind of kind of glad about it this is the best thing about our lives 
is the worst stories are so good for these They're podcasts. So <laughs> I mean, I accidentally and and I I told my my ex that I cheated on her when I didn't. That's the worst Boy. freaking thing ever, and I'm going to put it out on the internet. You know, can it really but, can your date really be worse than that, Damien? It's can not it? it's not the date. It's like I'm such an introvert. It, the date I'm sure would be great. But yeah, I get what you're saying. I I do. I'm just an introverted man, but I need to break out of my shell because I don't want to be alone forever. Um, you could invite her over to watch anime. That's a little forward. I mean, anime is a second date kind of thing for sure. <laughs> anime is for sure a second date. You uh, don't bring Naruto out. and chill? <laughs> I actually, like, a year ago, I very briefly dated a girl who was, like, super into Naruto. And we actually had, like, a date plan for, like, we, we should watch Naruto. Um but then I wasn't feeling it, so, you know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We're at the moment of the podcast where Damien... is making squeak noises. Damien is making squeak noises. It's his signal, please change the subject. <laughs> I'm awkward as hell. Okay, I will go to therapy. I'll go on a date sometime sooner or later, and I'll try not to be so introverted. Next topic. You better be hey. careful, man. We're going to just end up making a Smosh Pit video out of nowhere where you go on a date. <gasps> oh, what have you done? Hey, remember when Ian did that uncomfortable two truths of one lie? <laughs> Wasn't that crazy? Let's talk about Wait, it. Wait, Ian, are you dating anyone? Yeah, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any leads? Uh, Damien uh, just, just slapped Sticky... Tried to drink his water bottle. Slap Sticky? It's when you sticky. fall down in a cherry pie. <laughs> it's all Sticky. What? <laughs> uh, Ian, are you dating anyone? Ian, are you dating anyone? Ian. No. Uh, Ian's face, I not. think he's lying. But are you, like, are you... Uh, any leads? You know, any leads? Any leads? Any, do you have any leads on, like, dating anyone? Um, Very, very light. Mm. Very light leads, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Sick. Sick. Yeah. Very light. Oh. But um, keeping, keeping my heart open, mm. you know? <laughs> Okay. I don't have girls that are telling other people that they think I'm cute. That, oh, snap. You know. So you're saying Damien has a greater lead than you Damien do. has a, a million time better lead. Damien has well, like someone like he could go on a date with. 100%. That's crazy. 100%. And we Boy, even we even tried to like we I I was planning with my coworker. I was like I was like how are we going to do this? She's like all right, here it is. He follows her that on right Instagram. That right there is too much pressure. Okay. That that right there what? is too much pressure. What? What? Here's the setting plan of setting you up. I, I at any time could find this person and message her. I even I even planned on having like a little dance night thing where like I was hoping that you you know you and that girl would be able to go. This is this is how I hooked Anthony up with his with his oh, current snap, girlfriend. But that worked. Yeah. Yeah. My 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 uh ex ex girlfriend, the one from the way back when uh, she was visiting LA. She knew this. She knew this very funny girl, mm. and uh, and she was like, "He, she'd be perfect for Anthony." And Anthony was single at the time. And Anthony's like, "No, no, no! I don't want people. To, I don't want to be set up with yeah, the guy." Yeah, Anthony's no, got oh, it. Wow. He's got the right idea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anthony was also like, he he wasn't. I don't think he was into like dating around or mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. And he was very resistant to it. And we did this dance night thing. They met at my house and uh, they hit it off immediately. Oh and my God. guess what, Damien? They're still together oh after like God. three, four years. So Holy crap. That's really cool. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I have no problem with it. I just, I'm not good with pressure. And, uh, but uh, yeah, I, yeah, sure. Let's. You're talking to us, aren't you? Wait, what are you saying what's, right what's now? The difference, what's the difference no. between talking to us? H hold on. I think we just got confirmation though. No, I'm saying like pressure in this situation of but just like, saying, yo, dude, you should go on that date. Yeah, message that girl. I'm like, ah, let me feel it out okay. when I do, do it. it for us, Damien. Ah. But look, I don't think this, whoever this girl is, I don't think she listens to this. And so she won't know what we're planning matter. right now. Like also, we're just saying, like the, we could casually. Also, for the viewers, this is not an invitation to go on a crusade to try to find out who this girl is yeah, and you're pressure never gonna, her. It's not yeah. that's 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 also not cool, and it's none your business. Even though we're making it our business. Yeah, to try right. To, it's no one's business, but the person involved. The person involved. The one. <laughs> we're just trying to be. We're just trying to wingman this. Yeah. For viewers. 
But we have viewers. We're not alone in a room. The good news is it's not going to be a dance night. It's going to be right now. Why don't you come on in, Lorraine? <laughs> <laughs> Lorraine. <laughs> Lorraine's obviously a made-up name. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah, anyone named Lorraine. That's a type of quiche. <laughs> you know, my heart's open because if Kathy Bates ever decides... She's interested. To read even one of your letters. <laughs> even one of my 50 million letters I've sent her. Hmm. Yeah. No, but I'll, I'll be honest. Like, I am open to the idea. I'm, I'm on, like, the dating apps right now, which I've actually had some matches and stuff there. So, like, I'm just, I'm not very open about talking about dating stuff usually. So that's part of, so it's not like I'm not, it's not like I'm completely out of the loop entirely. I just don't want to give the wrong impression. Hmm. I f***ing hate how long we've been talking about this, by the way. <laughs> I'm literally dying. This is killing me. I'm sure you can all see how wildly uncomfortable we kinda, I am. We kind of run through, like, what should we talk about on this podcast before we start? And uh, this was not a topic. I want to die. And boy, we have, we are sticking to it, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I envy dead. <laughs> Will you agree? No. To at least follow her and like one of her posts. Sure. Open up. Can we, can we talk about anything open else? Up, open up that door. Please. Ooh. Can we talk about anything else? Well, I mean. So we're getting to know each other better, Damien. Yeah. I'm getting to know a lot about you. <laughs> <laughs> and what you'll do for views. And what I'll do for love. That's true. Yeah. This is all for love, Damien. Thank you. I think if Cupid yeah, was real, getting... he would have the personality of Ian. It's <laughs> a little old bastard. <laughs> He's like, "How you? F you looking to get married? I'll set you up, you little bitch." <laughs> but we are getting to know each Take other a little better. Take this arrow. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even shoot. He's like, "Here, you know what to do." Boof, boof, arrow to your dick. But yeah, I think in terms of Smosh Squad, you and I probably know each other the least. Is that right? Oh, I wow. think so. Hmm. Because. When I did pop in every now and then to a pit video, like back in the day, it would be like core pit cast and mm. you might not always be in it. And we are friends, but you have also always been in this world, my boss. And so there is, I think, that little layer of separation. So, yeah, I'm enjoying getting to know you a little bit better. I think you are, to be frank, you're probably the toughest person for me to figure out here. <laughs> you are. Well, that's true. I yeah. think that's just genuinely true. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and I mean, it's probably... I probably ex exacerbate your sort of social anxiety where, you know, I just, you know, cause I, I want to, I want to get to know Damien, mm -hmm. but Damien is like, ha ha, joke, 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 yeah. joke. You both, you both are actually, you're somehow opposites, but also the same in how you kind of have walls up. Yeah. <laughs> and you keep how we away. deflect. Yeah. Yeah. You're both, you're both very extreme about it. Game recognize game. Mm. Yeah. We're both walled up boys. So I wonder I what, just, what can we do, you and I, to not to break those down? Is it a time thing for you or is it experience things? Do you and I just need to hang out more? Or like what, what would help us get to know each other like in a more legit way? Hmm, that's a great question. Yeah, I think we probably just need to hang out more. Um, yeah. I think it's also just, it's also just uh, you know, you have a tendency to, to your, your reflex is to make a joke. Mm -hmm. And I just want to see real Damien. I want to know real Damien. I think because I don't know you as well right now and like, you know, Shane and I are very close. And so we have the style of humor where it's like, you know, we kind of shit on each other and that's just kind of like, ah, we're razzing each other. But because I don't know you as well yet, that's part of like how I'm playful and every, and because you're not very readable person, I have these moments of like, oh, did that actually upset Ian? Or is he, is he upset that it, I think I cut him off just a minute ago? Like, oh no. Like that's another thing. You are the most apologetic person. I am. I really on am. On the planet. I really am. And like, and I'm sorry and about I, that. I, <laughs> <laughs> and like I, I appreciate I appreciate that you are you are very mindful you are very mindful of, of everyone's feelings and, and it's good to be it's good to be like very you know a very compassionate person. Mm. Most of the things that you apologize for, I'm like, I didn't even realize any of the like like I'm sorry that I cut you off here or I'm mm -hmm. sorry that I did this. I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And then yeah. I have to go explain why you would be offended potentially yeah. Yeah. and that makes it worse. I'm like, oh, that's uh, I didn't notice when Damien and I first met on set back on uh, Disney Channel. We were we met at like we had a table read and then we had lunch afterwards and then uh, went home for that day. The next day I come in, I walk past his dressing room, 
And I was like, oh, good morning, Damien. And he goes, he goes, hey, man. Oh, hey, uh, I just want to say, uh, I'm sorry. Yesterday at lunch, I, I, I think I interrupted you at one point. I'm, I'm so sorry about that. And I was like, uh, I don't, I don't remember. I don't think you did, but oh, thanks. I did. Thanks. I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Damien. I think you just interrupted Shane right you there. Son of a Can bitch. You, yeah, Shane, please apologize. Uh, fight me. <laughs> no, I will not apologize to Shane anymore because I've learned that even if you make a big mistake and it, and you're the one at fault. You never apologize, never, never surrender, never take. But no, it's, take no prisoners. It's definitely. Um, I think. Uh, I think in. Uh, I didn't have a lot of friends in like middle school, high school, and I think it sort of goes back to that. Um, I was if I ever like talked in class, it was sort of like a oh shut the hell up kind of deal, or like I was like oh the annoying kid because I would try to make jokes or whatever, and I always felt very removed because I also did like professional acting work and I would miss a lot of school days and I was always like, you know, oh, this is what I really care about, not, you know, school stuff. So I never really felt close to those people. So I found that I had the best success when I was just quiet and didn't say anything. So I think I often apologize for my presence without realizing it, which is a bummer. Mm. But And I'm trying to get past that too. But Sounds like both of you would really benefit from going to therapy. Yeah, go to therapy. <laughs> yeah, we should both do it. Yeah, probably should. If we make a pact, I mean, I could go on a website right now and find a therapist. And you'll pay for mine? I believe you both have the same insurance. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you heard him say it, folks. He will pay for my therapy. Oh, that's weird. I didn't know um meant yes, definitely I'll pay for your therapy. Uh, <laughs> if you guys uh, want to support Damien uh, going to therapy, uh, subscribe to his Twitch. Or just subscribe Ooh. to my Twitch in general. Thank you very much. Twitch.tv oh, wow, slash yeah. Damien Haas. That being said, I might have to miss a stream or two if I'm going to therapy. I think they would definitely understand. <laughs> Thank you. I will say that has been the coolest thing. I have had to take a little bit more of a step back. I'm doing like one less stream per week. And whenever I have to cancel now, people, I love my community. They totally understand. Um, it's always like, hey, I've got a professional reason. I've got this audition. Or like, I'm super sick and we're filming in the morning. I got to do it. But I also know that if I was ever just like, I really just need a me night, they would be like, great, take your me night. Good I luck. think I think the the way that Twitch works right now is insanely unhealthy. Like mm -hmm. I think if you want to be demanding. if you want to be a prolific streamer, you have to be streaming so much, and it's it's very unhealthy. And I want I want us to be on Twitch because I think it's a great platform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the way that we create content, it's just not possible right now. Like I want I want to be on Twitch, and I think we can do something on there. But it's like no, we can't. Be on Twitch for five hours a day. Every That's day. the thing. Stuff. I experienced the best growth immediately when I started. I mean, one, because the Smosh community really wanted to support and we're feeling a drought of Smosh-related people because mm -hmm. the Defy thing happened. But also, I would stream for like three hours a day, five days a week, at least three hours a day, five days a week. And that was still considered pretty low. Yeah. Um, so it was, you know... But that was a lot. It's a lot of time to be on because I'm also not the type of streamer that just sits there and plays the game and is like good at it. I'm more about like the interaction and actually listening and talking to people. And I'm like talking the whole time and it's not just like droning on. I'm like on. So that constantly for several hours, a day, it's just the burnout happens real quick. I enjoyed it, but I was still just like, I'm exhausted. I can't believe I'm doing this again today. Wow. And there's, like, and there's people that are doing that for like eight hours a day with zero people watching in the hopes that, you know, people will come across it and mm -hmm. they'll slowly build up a following. I'm like, it's crazy. that's insane. It's... Can you imagine working a job and you're like, man, I hope one day I get paid. Internship. It's, 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 <laughs> it's an internship. It's very impressive. I mean, uh, you know, I think a lot of people who don't know anything about the community, like, I've heard people talk crap about, you know, Ninja and stuff like that being like, oh, he makes that much money playing video games? It's like, man, if you watch those streams, it's mm -hmm. insane. And I've watched a bunch of Damien streams, and it's nuts. You're playing this video game while also answering and talking to people constantly. You're keeping up on stuff. I, I It almost makes me dizzy sometimes. I'm like, how are you doing this? Thanks, man. It's very wholesome. His, his streams are incredibly wholesome because a lot of people are asking advice for uh for things um a lot of times mental health wise and you're you're just it's you talking to people about very real things for right. for hours on end it's it's very impressive i appreciate that a lot yeah Thank man you. yeah i i think it'll be really interesting to see what twitch is in in like five or so years because i just mm. i don't know man like i feel like it's gonna it's gonna catch up like uh, can you imagine being a, a streamer streaming for 12 hours a day for 10 years but people are going to keep doing years. it like 
they'll keep bringing new people on then. Yeah. I mean, but it seems like very much like a, a young man or a woman's game. I think there's a push by Twitch right now to, there's like, you know, when you just join and then you can make affiliate and then you can make a partner. I think there's a big push by Twitch right now to like really emphasize the people that are at the affiliate level. So like the partners are the ones that are doing those crazy long streams. But I think for people that are in that mid range, you know, it's probably shorter streams, probably not as often. And they're for whatever reason, really pushing those. So maybe in five years, it'll be more of a thing where like, because streaming is so regular at a certain point, you know, you might just see that person two hours a day. And there are so many streamers that it's almost like TV shows you watch. You don't want to watch Game of Thrones for eight hours a day every single day, but you're excited for the Sunday. And, yeah. you know. Yeah. I'm, the amount of pressure that's put on just Internet personalities and stuff. Cause it's the same mm -hmm. with YouTube, man. I mean, people are get burned out because it's so demanding. You just you're not allowed to stop ever. Yeah, is the feeling. It's it is exhausting. I mean, and you're competing against the world. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not like there's a couple channels that that will that have streamers on. It's no, you're competing against anybody that wants to be a streamer, mm -hmm. and that's a that's going to be an ever expanding group of people. It's it's so it's so tough, man. Like and and I, I don't know how video game people like gamers on the internet. It's such a hard job because uh, when I first came on and tried to do a Smosh Games video or two, I was like, "This is exhausting." Yeah, this is exhausting to play a video game while also be being entertaining while you're playing a video game is so much harder than you think. Yeah. Well, I think I think also a lot of YouTubers trying trying Twitch get burnt out because there is that that feeling if I have to be on whereas like a lot of people that came up on Twitch there isn't for a lot of them there isn't like an on it's like mm -hmm. oh I kind of came up and on myself and I'm mm -hmm. playing this game and I'm kind of doing this thing and it's it's more casual but as like a YouTuber it feels like you know the camera's on you have to be on you have to be like high energy like super engaged making jokes all the time and that's just it's impossible. It's so tough. But massive respect for anybody that's that's grinding on Twitch. Keep it up. Um, I hope one day you, you reach ninja status. I hope you all reach ninja status. You all get that Red Bull money. You can hopefully one day y'all can all floss in Times Square. <laughs> <laughs> to mild applause. Oh, that was such a bummer. <laughs> that was rough. I felt bad. I felt I, God, bad. so bad for him to be put on the spot there. Because you Some know they were like, shot all right, Freud. Ninja, we're going to have you stand in front of Times Square. And uh, can you do that flossy thing you do? Oh, what? Oh, <laughs> <Huh>, what? Uh, <laughs> and they're like, we will pay you this much money. Great. Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. What feels different about Smosh for you guys, let's say, after Anthony left? Damn. Mm. Damn. Well, I don't know if I'm Asking the, the best to answer this because I I only met Anthony like once. And I'm not even sure to, he remembers me, to be frank, because it was really quick. Um, when I first started, he was on vacation for like my whole first month. He was like out of the country or something or like he was in Europe or something like that. And then when he finally came back, like I saw him in the bathroom. And when I got out, I was just like, oh, hey, man, I'm Damien. I'm one of the new guys. He's like, hey, how's it going? I'm Anthony. Nice to meet you. And that was like it. And so for me, nothing. <laughs> I'd, I'd sure like to meet him again. There have been a couple opportunities, but I, it's that weird thing where it's like, I don't know if this dude remembers me or knows who I am, so I don't want to introduce myself again, but it's also weird. And, oh, we made eye contact, and he's all the way over there. And do I go over and say hi? And uh, like, That's my brain. There's old nervous Damien. Yeah, that's me. For me, I mean, there is a difference. Uh, you know, Anthony's great, and he was always really nice to me uh, when he was here. But I would say there was a feeling... While, when he was still here, that it was like you and him and then the rest of us. And we kind of were very separate. You know, there was that long period of time where, uh, you know, on Smosh Pit, it was just just us, uh, you know. And, and you guys would do Smosh's board. We would do our things. And, and you guys would do Friday sketches that we would sometimes be in. And we would be on Every Blank Evers. And it was this weird. And I think it was, you know, I don't think it was necessarily intentional. I just think it just was kind of how things fell. And, uh, but... But after he left, it suddenly was like, all right, well, we, we have no tr – it's, it's all got to come together a little bit more. We have to change. This is a big change. And uh, it took time, but it still felt like suddenly more and more like, oh, like I'm not just some new featured player on Smosh. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm part of it. I'm, I'm part of this thing. Yeah. Um, I will say I feel bad looking back. It was so weird because the week 
that Anthony left, the last videos we shot with him, it was the same week that I broke up. I went through my breakup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I two breakups in one week. So I remember it was a day. I think it was the day. Uh, like I, my wow. breakup happened at three a.m. And then As they do. on a on a on a day that like or no, it was the day after that. But but still, I was just dead and I was just zoned out mm. and I remember we we filmed with him and then I was walking towards my car and he was on the other end of the street and I, I'm just kind of walking back to my car zoned out and all of a sudden I hear oh, I'll see you later man and I turn back and it's Anthony just just waving goodbye and uh, I was like oh yeah man I'll see you later and that was us saying goodbye yeah. like him wow. and I was like and I, I look back and I'm like oh man I wish I had a but you and didn't... obviously we like have talked many times since you know but yeah. still it was it's weird but wow. also you didn't you didn't know that was his last thing because mm-hmm. that was that was a, it was a secret it was yeah. a secret that between me and him at that time <sighs> he told me he was leaving but but he wanted i thought this was after it was a uh, nope was it wow yeah. so it i was, guess then yeah it's weird it all blurs together you know yeah. but but looking back i was i'm like wow that was that was that yeah it was at that point it was a secret he asked me to to keep it you know under wraps so he can try to you know, plan his, his exit. Mm-hmm. And there, he was afraid of a, you know, a leak of sorts. So mm. it was just between me and him. I mean, the channel, the channel before, you know, for the year leading up to his departure, the channel was so split. Like it, it was, really it was, was literally like there was, there was two channels mm-hmm. on one channel mm-hmm. where it was like the Ian and Anthony show and then the Smosh Squad show. Our channel was definitely in a rut. Like there was, I mean, the meme basically started that we were never going to leave 22 million subscribers wow. because we were stuck on 22 million for like a year and a half. Wow. And then, yeah, uh, I mean, it, it, you know, him leaving forced, forced an evolution that was, that was sorely needed. It, it really is a lesson in, I, I think it, it, bad things or just not necessarily bad things, but just big changes are always scary. Mm. You always think, oh, this is the end. And they, man, that's the time when you really make changes yeah. that can leave. Because it was, it was Anthony leaving, started a new phase. And then the Defy shutdown was honestly, looking back, it's the best thing that's yep. ever happened to us. But on that day, it was the worst day of all of our lives. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know Defy was so bad because I was so ignorant to it. Like I didn't. I hadn't done anything internet based until I joined there. So I was just like, whatever, why is we got the best job in the world? Why are people complaining? Now being here at Mythical, I'm like, oh, this is how things are supposed to be and yeah. could be. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. we really, really got lucky. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, that just that just goes into that thing of uh, you know, when sometimes the the scariest decisions are the best decisions. So, Damien, go out on a date with this girl. Boy. Yeah, I think that's... Man, that's impressive, Ian. Good work. Woo! We literally talked before this, and I'm like, hey, just so you know, like, someone pressuring me into dating someone is the worst way to get me to date someone. Oh, I so wasn't there for that conversation. We talked, you and I were, you and I spoke Ian was about in, it. Ian was in front you of you, but he was not there it. for it. So now, now that's never going to happen. Damien, let me, let me tell you something about Ian. He can be right in front of you, but he may not be present in the conversation. Didn't you moments ago just be like, show me the real Damien. I want to learn the real Damien. Are you even going to be there to fucking meet him? <laughs> I'll be here. I don't. I don't know. Well, at least don't. At least you don't have to go on a date with her. But yeah. Just, you know what, Damien? Probably good just if you like, don't. It's probably good if you never do. But just like, uh, probably the other. How is you know, this the day. main topic of this podcast? But just you know, just how did like, we get here? Just just shoot a small shot. Uh, yeah, you know, just, just like a how about, free throw. How about I agree to get back into the world of dating, whether it's with this girl or however I decide to do it. I will agree at some point soon to put myself out there. Is that an attainable goal for everybody that it matters to here that's not me? Um, it's not enough. All right, well, I quit. Because I think uh, I want to see, see action. No, not like that. I don't want to see – I don't want to see any – I don't want to see. It's my boss, ladies and gentlemen. gentlemen. I don't see. <laughs> it's my <laughs> boss. That is the president. <laughs> I'm done with words. I need to see action. Damien, Shane, 
It was so nice talking to you guys on this podcast. Thanks, man. I had Thanks, a great Ian. time. <laughs> I had a really good time, too. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this uh, episode. And it, just so you guys know, we have some new merch dropping next weekend. This is actually one of the the OG sweaters uh, that you can get. That's right. Um, get some get some retro smosh. I actually never got one of these sweaters. I don't know what happened, but that's Defy for you. Um, so, yeah, it's a pretty sweet yellow hoodie. I think we got like 200 of them. We have a very small stock of them, so... How Exclusive. Much? We have 100. 100. So, and each guys, of them is hand signed by Ian Hecox. No, that's each one them crazy. Is, <laughs> each one of them is hand signed wow, by Damien's busy, date. Ian. Oh, Damien's <laughs> gonna sign them on his date. Hey, yeah. Tinder for Hot Dogs has a shirt. Oh snap! That is correct, guys. There is a Tinder for Hot Dogs T-shirt, and I'll tell you why there's a Tinder for Hot Dogs T-shirt is because you can wear it now, and it drops Tinder for Hot Dogs the sketch, which we are filming. This week, we are filming it right now. We are leaving this podcast. We are getting back to set. This curtain, uh, if I'm you're watching the video home. version, this curtain behind us, we're going to pull it back. We got a whole set right here. We got everything going. Tinder for Hot Dogs drops July 3rd. That is less than a month away, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, baby. And boy, it is crazy. It, things are spicing up on set. People are thinking, Shane, there's no way this is going to... We, we can't release this. This is too much. People's faces are going to melt off when they watch this sketch. I guarantee you, I am going to get an interview on Larry King when he watches this sketch, because Larry King is a big fan of Smosh, and he is going to love Tinder for Hot Dogs, and I know he loves hot dogs just as much as I do, and all of you are going to love Tinder for Hot Dogs. Is this a filibuster? Uh, guys, <laughs> I am Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, except it is on Tinder for Hot Dogs. Man, that's, Boy, a, what that's a almost out. as good as your Sam <laughs> Foote joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shelby Foote and, Shelby and Jimmy Foot. Stewart in Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Oh, I want to go to Washington. Guys, none of that matters. This, none of it matters because Tinder for Hot Dogs comes out soon and you can wear a shirt that says Tinder for Hot Dogs. And if I see you wearing one uh, on Twitter or anywhere, I will shed so many tears. I promise you. He will shed so many layers of clothes. That's right. Shane Top will get naked whenever he sees that shirt. And we have a very limited supply of those shirts oh, too, Oh my God. Right? And, and How many? Only how 1, 1,000 signed by Ian Hecox. We may only, we only have how many? a couple, guys, because I had to hand sew them myself. And, and I bled so much because I'm not good with needles. And he ironed and, on the hot dogs. And, and yeah, I ironed on actual, actual hot, hot dogs. dogs. Just, just, just hydraulic Hyd pressed the hot dogs mm. into the t-shirts. Guys, we have a budget of $500 million. <laughs> how much do you think a hydraulic sketch. press costs? Uh, it's a lot of, I, maybe I got a bad deal on that hydraulic press. Because, uh, but boy, it is going to be the biggest production you've ever seen. Do you like Avatar? Are you, are you excited for Avatar 2? You don't need to worry about Avatar 2 because Tinder for Hot Dogs comes out in a couple weeks. And it's just as good. James Cameron is shook. And just as a reminder, this merch comes out next week, so be on the lookout. And if you are watching this a week late, hey, get the merch right now, dum dum. Smosh dot store. Show your support for Tender for Hot Dogs. Make Shane the happiest baby boy in the universe. Make me such a happy boy, Damien. Ask that girl out on a date. Yes. <laughs> and uh. If you guys aren't subscribed to Smoshcast, do that right now. Uh, you can subscribe on any of your favorite podcast apps, or you can subscribe on our YouTube channel, uh, Smoshcast. If you want to listen to this uh, on Wednesdays, uncensored, it's on podcast apps. If you want to watch us and our pretty faces and watch Damien glare at me very angrily for talking about him dating a girl or trying to get him to date a girl, um, you're going to have to see this in video form because it's uh, it's something to witness. If you're listening to this on audio, I Oof. recommend also watching it on video yeah because um damien is not happy with me right he's now he's really not he's and genuinely not i'm gonna have to give him a nice long hug after this i don't know if i'd gonna... recommend that <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, uh, we'll see you guys next time bye everybody bye <laughs>